Hey everyone, Richard from Digital Foundry here, and I decided to take a look at Watch Dogs running at 4K on the PC using a Core i7 processor paired with, of course, the ubiquitous Titan X Pascal. And uh, yeah, interesting stuff here. Uh, one thing that is slightly odd is that uh, cutscenes seem to be presenting with a kind of horizontal border left and right. I'm not quite sure what's going on there. Tried it with a couple of different capture devices, and it's common throughout, so very, very strange and uh, in actual fact the presentation itself is slightly squished left and right and uh, this does not happen on the console versions. Interesting game this, it's extremely taxing on hardware to the point where I do recommend actually compromising settings even if you've got this incredibly powerful GPU. Now the point is that what really sets the PC version of Watch Dogs 2 apart from the console versions is the fact that you can run it at much higher frame rates and unlike the first Watch dogs it doesn't glitch or have streaming issues to anything like the same degree you can get great performance here uh, we've already published a RX 480 versus 1060 frame rate analysis where it copes extremely well and it's the same at 4k with the Titan X Pascal but yeah compromises are going to be required so this is the beginning portion of the game where we start off in the Marion area and the idea here is essentially to take a trip to San Francisco and well, get some clothes. So we're going to jump into this car and get going. Now there is fast travel available, but I think the point is that we'd rather skip straight ahead to the San Francisco area to see just how good a job they've done here. And overall, I think it's a really excellent representation and 4K, it really looks spectacular. But what if I told you that the PC version here wasn't actually rendering at a native 3840 by 2160? And yeah, it's actually a technique that Ubisoft first deployed in Rainbow Six Siege, and it kind of predates the checkerboarding techniques seen on PlayStation 4 Pro. But first of all, I wanted to show you some dual system control, dual wield capture of the PC version of Watch Dogs 2 versus PlayStation 4 Pro. Now the PS4 version is running at checkerboard 1800p versus well I guess it would be a kind of checkerboard 2160p on the PC version and to be honest both of them are resolving an excellent degree of clarity here obviously the PC version is crisper it's got quite a lot more native resolution in there but generally speaking as we're looking at the two versions here very very similar the frame rate really is the major differentiating factor and of course shadow quality is much much better but you know, in terms of geometry, in terms of texture quality, well, they're pretty much like for like. And in actual fact, as we look at this scene here where our main character is waking up, yeah, weirdly, there seem to be some shadows missing on the PC version. I've actually run this several times and the same thing happens each time. Very, very strange indeed. And uh, there's a couple of minor anomalies which we'll kind of pick up on where the PC version isn't quite up to scratch. Now here, I'm actually running on ultra settings with everything maxed and there's a kind of extra detail setting which is extremely taxing on your system setup here. I've got this set to 50%. Now what that actually does is, well, think about it this way. As objects move further away from the camera, there's no need to display so many triangles. You can use a smaller amount of triangles and you can't really tell the difference. So what the extra detail setting does is actually forego that. You actually get much more detail on objects that you can't really see. So it's kind of like an overkill setting, even on ultra it's set to zero. That gives you some idea of what they're doing here. But yeah, as we get into the car here, you can see that, well, yeah, I mean, much, much better shadows. There's also extended draw distance on the PC version. And in this shot, you can see on the ground here, that uh, the PC version has screen space reflections and these seem to be completely disabled on the console version. On the PC, yeah, you get a really lovely kind of specular effect on the floor there and proper reflections completely absent on the PlayStation 4 Pro. And uh, I have to say that the effect here is extremely taxing on GPU hardware. So I'm not sure I can actually recommend it. In our RX 480 versus GTX 1060 test, we had to decide Disable that to get a full locked or close to it 60 frames per second. So yeah, we're going to take a look now at some exterior shots. PlayStation 4 Pro, again, it's holding up pretty well, surprisingly. And uh, yes, the PC version
Martian does have a much longer draw distance, but actual real life scenarios where you can pick out the difference, very, very difficult to see actually. Now there are scenarios where the extended draw distance is clearly a boon for the PC version. But yeah, I was talking about some anomalies earlier and this is one of them. Now at the moment, what we're seeing here is a kind of, uh, well, when you leave the keyboard alone for a while, when you leave the pad for a while, it will default into giving you this kind of sweeping view. So I set up some like for like shots and um, yeah, funnily enough, the time of day seems to move faster on the console versions for some reason. So I wasn't able to get a complete lock. But yeah, you can see that the PC versions are resolving more geometric detail in the mid distance. But weirdly, on the end of this shot, you can actually see that the PlayStation 4 version is resolving like some extra building detail further into the distance than uh, the PC version, which is very, very strange. But meanwhile, the PC version has a, a bridge in the far distance, which isn't being resolved to anything like the same level of detail. All very strange. But I think the point is that, well, Watch Dogs 2, very good looking game, very well balanced in terms of graphical settings on the consoles. Now you can obviously push things further out on the PC, but 60 frames per second really was my goal here. So how did I do that? Well, you can see here that we're having problems. Uh, the rain is causing issues, uh, but it's not actually the rain as such. It's the implementation of those screen space reflections that I was talking about earlier. Uh, Tom was doing some analysis on the console versions and uh, actually using the screen space reflections on Ultra was adding a hit of 20 frames per second on GTX 1060. So yeah, obviously remove that on the PC version. Yeah, you lose the screen space reflections, but what you gain is a huge boost to performance, 60 frames per second, pretty much locked here. There will be some instances later on where you'll see some frame rate dips, but we'll talk about that later. But you know, temporal resolution for me is much more important than physical resolution but obviously with the Titan X Pascal we can do a bit of both and the overall balance just looks spectacular. So yeah this is now much further on in the game I actually picked up where Tom left off on his GTX 1060 RX 480 analysis. Played through a few more missions here and I wanted to kind of stress test these settings that I've got and well here we're moving into foliage heavy scenes and this generally does cause issues for GPUs. It's much more of a hit to memory bandwidth for starters. Titan X Pascal, it is holding up quite nicely here, but as we kind of move at speed through the environments, there is issues in kind of slight stutter creeping in. Saw a similar thing, but it was much, much worse on the original Watch Dogs. But I think the point is that I went into the PC version looking for a clear visual upgrade over console. Obviously it looks better. Now I tend to do most of my gaming in a desktop environment where the screen is right in front of me and uh, I also favor using 40, 43 inch Ultra HD screen for desktop gaming. It really is quite epic. And in this case, 4K really is a huge payoff and you can kind of see the difference versus 1800p. Now on the other hand, the console versions, uh, best played in the living room, I guess. And again, 1800p there does a really good job on a 4K screen, but what you don't get and what we are getting here is 60 frames per second. And that really is the game changer as far as I'm concerned. Now, obviously, Obviously Titan X Pascal gives us both temporal resolution and a physical resolution boost as well and the overall result is epic. Well I think we've demonstrated really just how spectacular this game can look on the PC. Beautiful port by Ubisoft more than makes up for the really disappointing Watch Dogs 1 and uh, I really wanted to share with you guys how beautiful this game looks at 4K on really powerful hardware. Now obviously Titan X Pascal is a hugely expensive GPU which is way out of most people's price budgets. But what I will say is that it is inevitable that a 1080 Ti with a very similar performance profile will be coming in 2017. So yeah, 4K60 at the moment, it's the preserve of SLI setups and stupidly expensive GPUs. But next year, the cost of admission for this kind of experience should get a lot cheaper. And uh, one thing which I would like to point out, of course, is that the Titan X Maxwell, at one point that was a thousand dollar GPU. You. These days, the performance profile of that card is available for about $400 uh, in the form of GTX 1070. So if you can be patient, it won't be that long before this level of exceptional performance is more affordable.
Okay, so this is my final video in production for 2016. Uh, I'm going to be heading off on holiday shortly. Tom, Dave, John, they've already gone. Apologies to PC users if they felt a little neglected since our focus has been on PlayStation 4 Pro since its launch. Uh, all I'll say there is that, well, we are a very small team of just four people and uh, producing in-depth analysis, 4K videos, that kind of thing. It's really taken a toll and we really need a break. So thank you very much for your understanding. Thank you very much for your support. And remember that if you want to see this video the way it was meant to be seen before YouTube introduces all of those horrible compression artifacts, I highly recommend supporting Digital Foundry $5 per month via Patreon. And for that, you'll get full unlimited download access to everything that we do. And in the case of these 4K videos, watch them on a 4K TV and you're in for something really special. But that's all I've got for you for now. Thanks once again for supporting Digital Foundry throughout 2016. Big plans ahead for 2017, but for the time being, well, I'm going to be taking a break. We're going to be running a range of content that we've already banked, so there'll still be plenty to look forward to across the holidays. But for now, I'm going to leave it there and go home. So thanks for watching.